imagine we're in a cave, it's the ice age, cave bears are coming in and out, people are in and out, people are digging holes, making fires, doing all sorts of things. The mammoth step with the wind howling outside, especially in the winter months, but even in general. You know, windy conditions, these small acoustic instruments, you wouldn't be able to hear them, right? Unless you were standing right next to the person playing it. But here in the caves, if we stop talking, we can actually hear the water drops, right? I can hear them very clearly, right? So here, when you play music, it's perfect. There are innumerable examples, whether it's in a religious context or other contexts, that music can move people probably more than any other form of art. And from my point of view, there's every reason to assume that was the case in the Ice Age as well. Just here at Holofels, we have one kind of bird bone flute, the uh, Griffin Vulture flute, very complete, beautiful musical instrument, and then we have two small fragments from two different ivory flutes. That is a copy of the oldest, almost complete music instrument in the world we have. It's a music instrument, uh, it was called a flute, and it's made of the radius bone of a vulture and there's different possibility to play it. We can try to play it like a cane. I made a reproduction with the same bone here, but it's almost impossible to have a real good tune. But there's a possibility, you know, that looks like the end part of a clarinet. So an hypothesis, it could have been not a flute, but a reed instrument. So I make reproduction, making a reed made of birch bark, and I put this reed of birch bark on this instrument. And what we have is not a flute. It's, we can call it a proto-clarinet. And it sounds like that. <laughs> That's a real flute. This flute is made of a uh, cubitus, I mean that bone of a vulture. The original is around 5,000 years old. It has a real hole here uh, to, play, to play the music. What has played is not prehistorical music. What has played is music played of prehistorical music instrument. Because we have the instrument, but we will never know what kind of music they played with that. I would never try to reconstruct a musical tradition over 40,000 years, right? We know there are periods in time where, let's say, between the Gravettian and Magdalenian in our region, We've got about 15,000 years where no one even lived here, right? So the idea of saying we can trace an unbroken history of music over all these millennia, I think that's ridiculous. However, what we can demonstrate is with the first musical tradition where we have good data, and that would be from the sites here, that we have a very rich musical tradition. These instruments are very sophisticated. You can play all kinds of music in them, with them. You can play many different ways. And there's nothing that makes these musical instruments less sophisticated than musical instruments today. This bullroar is made of wood. Maybe you have seen about the same in Australian films, Crocodile Dundee, he uses such a bullroar sometimes. This is a traditional old Swedish bullroar. And now you see it will not produce sound. Why? Because it has to whirl around the air. So I have to give it some help. And then it comes. So it's not as, that easy to perform on such uh, simple instruments. Um, the archaeological finds we have from hunter-gatherer Stone Age, eight, nine thousand years old, uh, are made of bone, those uh, bull roars that are uh, preserved. Uh, for sure they were also made of wood like this one. The best known one is from Roche-la-Land in southwest of France. 
is of a decoration made of lines in group here, five, 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 and then four. We don't have any idea of what the signification of these lines. Was it mere decoration, just for fun? Or does it have a spiritual meaning or thing? We will never know that. It is told that the sound of, from a bull roar can attract bats. Sometimes they uh, caught the animals and killed them, dried the animal, pulverized it, put the pulver in a drink. That's an old male right. And uh, these were for sure, the further back in time we go, Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age, very magic implements. The flute from Divya Barbe was found in a cave within a layer that is 60,000 years old and that it was accompanied by a series of uh, Musterian stone tools, a series of hearths, uh, that is to say the, the, the very intensive remains of the Neanderthal settlement of this uh, site. The argument that the the ones who don't believe this to be a bone flute um, are connected to the possibility that these two holes are results of the bites of the carnivora in order the bone to be fragmented. Yeah? And obviously this didn't took place. Yeah? What they didn't take into account was the, were the two additional holes partly preserved at the, at the edges of the, of the flute and uh, the fifth one on the other side, almost wholly preserved, almost completely preserved. But what is the main argument for us to consider it as a, a, a musical instrument is, of course, that a very complex music can be produced from this uh, object. We do know that the Neanderthals used music. Perhaps music was invented even before. Also, we can add to this that music is a very wide uh, term, yeah? in the sense of rhythm, in the sense of melody, in the sense of uh, um, tonality and so on. And in this sense, of course, we can expect that the bone tools, the stone tools, many, many other objects were subject to producing some kind of rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> 